But you're not here, we are not together You and I, no guarantee That's for sure, cause nothing lasts forever So we can say our goodbyes, goodbyes, babe Cause I'm done with your lies, I'm tired of it Packed in my heart, I had to leave I wash my hands of you and me tuned in to another episode of On The Move, Unscripted, On Purpose. And as always, I got my girls with me and we ready to rock. So let's find out how everybody's week has been. Kim, we're going to start with you. How has your week been? My day, my week has been dope. It has been powerful and magnified, (laughs) very enlightening. Um, which I claimed that, like last week, I told y'all I, I was claiming it anyway. So it was, it was being put into manifestation mode. I said, give me two weeks and watch. So one more week, you're going to see something else happen. But it's definitely been um, very powerful and, and very blessed and purposed, purposeful. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait till, till tomorrow. <laughs> I can't wait till tomorrow. It's been dope. All right now. That's dope. That's what's up. Okay, your turn, Misty. Uh, my week has been very trying and uh, um, aggravating and everything to the fullest. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I had, I had grandbabies. And, um, ooh, it was just too much energy for me. Too, it was just too much. I had two two-year-olds. And uh, I think uh, Jordan like seven or eight, and um, they were just like it was too much. It was too much. <laughs> then getting into it with the kids about their kids, and I'm like, look, if y'all don't want them disciplined, please don't bring them to me. I know that's right. 
Because, you know, I can't, you know, it was, it was some of that. <laughs> some of that. So it was really trying, a trying week. It was uh, aggravating, irritating, all that, but God is good because I'm still here. And um, like I was saying earlier, I'm lying down. So, you know, had 24 hours without the kids, so I, I feel a little bit better. I just got one now. <laughs> They must have thought you were super grandma. <laughs> yeah, and and the thing is, they say you a grandma. You supposed to be in the house with. What, excuse me. What? No, I did my job. I raised y'all, and y'all supposed to raise y'all. My yeah, job is okay. Tell them that this ain't that generation. <laughs> right. <laughs> grandma, this generation that they have to do like we're big mama and them. Uh-uh. You ain't bringing all them damn kids all at once. <laughs> Right. All kids on on Friday night, and you ain't got to come back and give them till you know Sunday night. That 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 was Big Mama and them, the Big Mama house. Now we got you know now Big Mama is about fifty. We is not trying to sit down. We're all friends on the Friday night. Look, back then Big Mama had more patience. My patience ran low. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying because Big Mama's about 70. You know what I'm saying? Big Mama's ain't 70 no more. They're about like 45, 50. Exactly. Right. 40. Right. <laughs> you yeah, think that generation, but I'm sure you're doing a really good job, Missy. I'm so proud of you. That's so sweet. But you got your grandbaby. That's what's up. It's okay. It's okay. So, um,. My week has been, um, it's been a good one. <laughs> I can't even lie. <laughs> I had a good week, like, really good week. Like, I can't even complain, like, week. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I can't even, I can't even I've had a, I've had a productive week, you know, um, <laughs> business and doing things, and then I've had a romantic week, and I've had a cool week with the kids, and my week has been the bomb. I told you I'm great. <laughs> I get to sleep in well, and wake up and work <laughs> when I feel like it. <laughs> oh, work okay. as as take breaks when I feel like it. I ain't got to look around the corner and see who's watching me clock out too soon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, it sounds like somebody else um, joined in. Who else want to say? Hi, ladies. Hi, ladies. I wasn't going to interrupt. It's Marie. Hey. Marie. Hey, Marie. Well, I'm not going to complain too much about my week since your week was the bo- I'm just getting off work. Thursday is normally a light day. I was not aware that if the third falls on a Sunday, they will get their check on Friday. So I have quite a few clients <laughs> that insisted that I came today because they won't be home tomorrow. Plus, they're opening up the city tomorrow, so I had like five extra visits that I was not encountering. Besides that, I had a good week. <laughs> Besides that, I had a good week. Your patient showed you listen here, listen here. I'm tomorrow, tomorrow Friday, they opening up the deck on gate tomorrow. I'm about to be out there. They didn't even give me that. They didn't even give me that. They said, "Hey, hey, uh, I hope you can come today because you know the third we get our check tomorrow, and then they said that our stimulus will be on this check tomorrow. So I'm not going to be home. I'm not. One just got real wild, and she got hers yesterday like, hey, I know you're supposed to be here this evening, but uh, my check came. I just happened to call because I, I got in the habit of calling every day, getting disappointed, and I'm already dressed waiting on the cab to go to the bank. I was like, what? I'm already in route. I'm like, well, I'm in route to your house. Well, can you drop me off at the bank? Like, I can do your visit. But no, no. So <laughs> I've been I've been plunked all week by my clients. But besides that, everything has been good. <laughs> well, except uh, the owner of the of the, one of the companies that I work for, her sister was the lady Tina, who was also a nurse at Pickway, and she passed away. A few days ago, but I also know that she had other uh, she had other health related problems. 
You know, and I did have to go to urgent care to pick a client up because he got stranded, his transportation left. And he said, you know, for everybody to have corona, the hospitals are kind of empty. You know, so I don't know where all the corona people are at unless they got them in one section because he's like the third person that told me there's really nobody at the hospital with corona. I'm like, I don't know, maybe they're all in quarantine. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. But it does make me raise an eyebrow. I mean, it makes me wonder, is the government purposely – doing this to see, I don't, I don't know, are they guinea-pigging us? I'm not sure, you, you know, because the, yes, yeah, cause the news was like, well, you know we're running out of meat, so people went bananas. I'm like, can I get some bacon? Can I just get some bacon? That's crazy. That's the stuff you ought to be staying away from anyway. The meat is just causing you to, to have a buildup of mucus and have everything in your body susceptible to catching whatever the hell is out here. Okay. Sure. So the well, very thing that you yeah. shouldn't be eating is what everybody's fighting for. Oh, right. Well, I didn't get it. So I guess I'm healthy this week. Yeah, supposedly there's been a million. Have you all heard? It's been a million people so far who have survived COVID-19. A million. I didn't know it was that many people who had it. But now a million. Do you know? But, you know, they never talk about them. They're they're too busy scaring people about the people who died. Now, I don't know if this is their way of trying to keep people to stay in the house or what, because it's going to be nice tomorrow, well, Friday and Saturday. It's going to be like 77 degrees Saturday and sunny. Watch the streets be flooded, because today, you know, I told you I'm the only good thing about this corona thing is I've not been caught in any traffic. But today it was a little traffic, and I'm like, damn it, it's almost over. It's all well, I, I'm gonna tell you who's not gonna be. And that's on teenagers or whoever in Chicago. They had a thousand people. They really did have a thousand people at a house party. They rented out a B and B. Shut up. A thousand people showed up and partied like it, you know, like they party like it was 1999. Like it's <laughs> Yeah. Now, I wonder how many out of those thousand end up being sick in the next two weeks. So I, I might follow up on that just to see. Because I didn't see all the thousand of them wearing no masks. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. Yeah, you know, I, I always believed that it was airborne. I just always did. It, it just, for some reason, just the way that, it came in the wave and how they were able to tell people, like, oh, we got, we got now, y'all get ready, you know. And then it's like two, three, and then all of a sudden it rains, it's like 50, 100. Oh, my God, darn. It was like it was moving in a pattern to me that was like a weather pattern. That's how it, it was moving to me. I just never believed that it was just, or just my feelings. I just felt like it's something more to this story. I just don't feel like we have the whole story, y'all. I really don't. And now they're telling you. And you're not going to get it. Don't expect it. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. They're going to tell us what they want us to know. Yeah, which is very little. It's to keep you in confusion. That's exactly it. Yep. So I know that's Uh, not the topic for today. What are we talking about? (laughs) I'm not about to be waiting on you.
Today's topic is going to be about relationships, the relationships between a man and a woman, the relationships between mother and daughter, you know, the, the family dynamics, what's going on within the family, uh, what's going on with these relationships between the mothers and daughters. We're just going to talk about, you know, black love. Black love. The positive okay. aspect of black men, the black woman, the, ba- the black family, the collective. Okay. So basically, I like that together. topic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I still don't mind. See, you can tell she all up in love. You, you can just feel it. But we didn't move. We didn't move from Corona to Black love. <laughs> oh, giggling like okay. True. True. Like a teenager in love for the first time. <laughs> yep. That's what we need for me, for me, being in a new relationship with a, a, with an African American man at my age, at fifty, it's refreshing to meet someone who we like the same things, we talk the same language. You know what I'm saying? And he's a real man about it. Like he's like holding it. Down. Like he, I got much mad respect for him. To be in a relationship with a man that you respect is like the ultimate for me. So I'm yeah, I'm still I'm still on honeymoon phase. Y'all have to catch me a couple months now. You know. Now you gotta practice <laughs> that. You gotta stay in that. The honeymoon phase is a choice to get out of. If you get out of it, that's a choice. You know what? That'll what, be your decision. The greatest thing is the peace. I, I, that's my thing. I wanted a relationship that was peaceful and that I didn't have to question. I didn't want one with still confusion and question and trying to figure out, do you like me? You know, check the box. Do you like me or do you not? Is, are you right. real or are you not? Like, that's the one that applies. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to, I got tired of that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah, it's refreshing for me. Yeah. But what happened, you know why you ended up in this relationship, right? In, in everything just, that makes you in everything that makes you happy or that that happy with that you're satisfied with is because you had to do that work on self energy everything right like attracts like so you were able to get yourself to a point of saying this is who I am this is what I'm about this is what I want to attract so you got your same energy back so you basically are intertwined with the masculine reflection of yourself Mm-hmm. You're right. You're 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 very. And you know what? I did put in the work. I don't know about nobody else, but I did because I have gone through my period of bad relationship, bad relationship, and then I took a period of time where I didn't date anybody for like a whole year, like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing intimate, nothing. Just just straight, like boom. So yeah. Is that when you? Is that when you kind of dove into yourself? And creating yourself, you know what I mean when you when you were focused on the movie, when you were focused on the movie, when you got focused on doing podcasts is is that around that time that that you took time to yourself really it's it, it kicked in for me since I've been back home in all honesty I, I can't even explain it. I mean, I was probably in that stage of starting to but I had so much turmoil and confusion going on, you know, for the the first uh, of 2019 that I, you know, I don't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I, I feel like Dorothy, I was, I was trapped in that going tornado. But now when I came back home, it's like, yeah, I just started just being grounded. I don't know the energy. I don't know what it was, but. You know, I think it could been. also be part of your roots. A lot of times when you fall short, when a plant dies or whatnot, the root is still alive, you know. So I think sometimes we all have to go back to the root to get started, to get that support, to get that family love, to get that. Oh, Trish, you know you got it. And, you know, your family, your immediate family, your brothers and sisters, your mom, they're going to give it to you as about as raw as you could take it because they're not one of your friends trying to be nice. You know, when I, when you and I have disagreements, when I, I mean, I always, I always start with something positive before I just go ahead and lay in what I got to say, because I think it's, it's important to have some type of positivity before they, they, you know, get the real, you know, as Kim would say, step on your toes and tell you just how 
fucked up you're being. Like, look, I think you're so wonderful, but you are so fucked up, you know. So I just feel like, <laughs> so, you know, and then you elaborate into why. But only, you know, only, only your real friends are going to come to you like that. But if it's somebody who's trying to get on with what you're doing, you don't you don't need a lot of yes people because they're not honest right, with you. Right. You know what? That has been the, the subject today. Uh, being around a bunch of yes folks. That was a subject that I was having earlier. I was talking about it um, a couple of days ago. Being yes men or yes women does not allow the individual to grow. It doesn't help them. You're actually cheating them because you ain't giving them the truth. You know, and that's, that's, y'all gotta, that is y'all real. Step on my toes. If you got to step on my toes to prevent me from running in a ditch, please do. Please do it. Mm. Right. And that's true because a, a lot of times in the end, they don't know how to handle it. Like when, prime example, when uh, Michael Jackson started becoming just real famous, and he started as a kid. So from a kid, he had a lot of adults and so many followers just doing whatever he said, whatever he thought was cool. And some of the stuff he did, like Mayan, Elephants, Man's Bones, no one even stopped. Like, why, why in the hell do you want those? You know, but... Just be, he was so used to people telling me yes, it got to a point where he wasn't expecting you to say no, and people didn't right. know how you would respond if you say no, you know. So right. I mean, you gotta have somebody in your corner, you know. And and a lot of times, if you could have like that supportive team, you need people that make sure you're being held accountable for what you're doing. That part, absolutely. That part. Yeah. But like people, Kim, I have a question for you. That hold you. Oh, go, go ahead. Well, well, when you get that, when you get finished with your statement, I oh, just no. wanted to know no, how no. did your week go after your website was up? How did that go? How did your first? How did this week go out? Play out for you? Well, I picked up some clients, um, so that's a good thing. I, I actually got another oh. person to um, become a member immediately. So that was dope. I'm still looking for people who are um, wanting and needing that virtual counseling. Of course, I, I got a, a $19 special going on right now for 30 minutes for those who want it and or need it. They can they can get that. But um, it's, it's doing all right. It's, it's doing good. It is manifesting, okay? To, to get just one is a come up. So <laughs> It's, You're right, because that's more than what you had last, you know, last what week. One thing that I did notice in the uh, in the news is that a lot of addicts that normally have their support system, you know, they didn't have that. And this week, like, there was eight exactly. overdoses this week, you know, and I'm oh, like, right. wow. I didn't real. Yeah. I mean, I knew counseling is very important, but I didn't realize some people that's in that state of mind with that addiction – how how imperative it was. and I felt like they were not prepared for those type of people, right? Because now we got yep. eight people that's no longer here simply because the help was not available. You exactly. know, so maybe they could, you know, like, hey, well, maybe we could have done virtual counseling because anything would have been better than nothing. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. It's just the knowing. Sometimes they just need to talk, even if the the person on the other end says nothing. Sometimes the person just needs to talk. They just need to vent, knowing that somebody is listening. You know what I'm saying? Even if they don't right. respond. They might not want you to respond, but they want to know that you're there. You know? Right. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm definitely pushing the counseling part of it. I, I, I do massage and all that. People are a little, you know, skeptical about being touched at this moment, but whatever. But, um, <laughs> counseling. I'm mad I'm know, not in Atlanta. I'm always down travel. for massages, like, hey. Okay, I travel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am mobile. <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm definitely you about to take over the game. She's the traveling but massage say, therapist. That is correct. I will be in your town probably next week or so. So, uh, yes, ma'am, make an appointment. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Man, start following. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of people that's losing their minds in every kind of way right now, and a lot of relationships are falling apart. You know, while we're talking about, about that tonight, a lot of relationships are falling apart because they're being pushed 
to the limit. They're being really tested to uh, see what, <laughs> what it was based on in the first place. You know what I'm saying? To see what the foundation was. They learn it. Sure. They are yeah, learning. Uh, yeah, because when you stuck in the house with somebody that you was only able to tolerate because you don't hardly see them half the day because they gone and now they in the house with you, getting on your nerves up in your face, that's a bad thing. Right. Indeed it is. One thing I will say, though, that is positive is that because we are naturally a, I don't want to say tolerant, <laughs> um, but patient people, there are those who will take this opportunity to practice more of it, um, look more at themselves and what their contributions have been to the relationship and focus on um, the rebuilding of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I really want to kind of stay focused on the positive of our people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's too much going on right now that's pointing to all the negative shit that's creating negative shit. So people look at us or continue to look at, look at us in that fashion. And I'm, I'm going to do my part to change that picture, you know, that, that whole conversation because we are and so we much better than that. You know, black people, black people as a whole are being viewed yeah. as we're, we're negative, we're aggressive, you know, and then all they show on TV are the <laughs> black people that get in trouble. You don't hardly see any Caucasians on top. I'm like, oh, well, they're, they're in jail. So they, they did something. Okay. Right. Yep. Well, kudos to the ones that's not the one that the one that's out here handling their business and and loving up on one another and taking care of the community at least doing their part in the community you know doing their part in the household um the ones that are willing to look at themselves you know be truthful with themselves acknowledge the liar in themselves and correct it that are really working on becoming more spiritually grounded and lifted at the same time, you know, those are the ones that, that I hold the highest regards for. And it's, there are plenty, you know, we just don't hear about them, but they do exist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there are what, what's that laughter? <laughs> okay, she all up in love. What are we talking about? <laughs> She on a whole different conversation. Get on the call. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, she back there playing footsie. No, I'm not. I'm actually trying to lock right now, so it was mad. So um, another thing that I wanted to talk about as far as families and black love and stuff is the love between a mother and a daughter because, you know, Mother's Day is coming up soon. And we actually, um, I actually had an interview with um, Mr. Stout and a woman, a, a psychologist named Dr. Fletcher, Dr. Bessie Fletcher. And it was deep because we did the, the live and she was talking about a lot of issues start off because the mother and the daughter are not able to really communicate things that they felt like maybe they held in stuff when they were growing up or anxieties or whatever. whatever. They, they haven't had that special conversation, that special talk. You know what I'm saying? And then that might reflect on how their daughters and how they and how the daughters relate to them, but it's really generational. Like it was really, really deep. And it's so crazy because my mother ended up being on that live. And so afterward we did begin like a conversation. Because a lot of times we don't have that deep sit down talk like this is what I still deal with and I feel like it's because of uh this is what I still deal with as an adult and I feel like it has something to do with my relationship growing up that I was never able to talk to you about. You know what I'm saying? You, there's yeah. mother-daughter patients that need to happen that are not happening, and it's affecting us as far as us in relationships that have to deal with our daughter. And if we don't get a handle on it, it's going to affect their daughter. You feel me? Yeah, yeah I totally feel you because I'm actually going through that with three of mine at this time. <laughs> like seriously, like when when one get mad, the other one get mad, and then the other ones get mad too. I'm like, what is wrong with these kids? Like, I just don't have no understanding. I really don't. 
And I said that too, like we all need counseling and we all need to, you know, be in counseling together so we can all pour out our feelings and communicate, you know, because that's the big barrier. Don't nobody know how to communicate with each other. Everybody getting their feelings and, you know, say things out of spite or, and, you know, we were taught it's not what you say, it's how you say it. But it's actually Mm -hmm. what you say and how you say it. You know, Amen. Um, right about that. I'm, I'm pretty close with all four of my children, but my oldest daughter, she, you know, whenever she goes through, she has, she goes, she's developed this like anger issue, and then she'll start talking calmly, and within the end of the sentence, she's screaming and yelling. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You know, why are you screaming and yelling? You act like you don't understand, and that I mean, it just flipped out on me which really threw me, and it wasn't, this was like her second time. And so my other daughter was like, well, Mom, you know, she's going through things. I'm like, you know what, I went through some things. I've never been that disrespectful. I've never been rude and disrespectful to my mother in that atonement, like where you would talk to me like I'm some fucking random-ass woman in the street. And so I'm like, Mother's Day is coming up because she did tell my youngest daughter, like, well, I do want to talk to mommy, but I don't know how to talk to her. I'm like, well, you just let make sure you let her know that was twice. You know, three is going to be a, a problem on site. And hopefully it's not going to be on Mother's Day because I'm all about, you know, my mother was more stern coming up. She, she was stern. She didn't play no games. So I spent a, a lot of time with my grandmother, and my grandmother was like a, 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 a black Mary Poppins. She was just the sweetest person in the world. So, And that's kind of how I tried to raise my children. And so I feel a little, I feel a little pissed because my kids were told, you know, now my kids, just this week, so it's crazy how this, we're having this conversation. You know, my oldest son is like, well, you know, Mom, you would you would try to shine us from things. He said, but you weren't being honest. Like when I was coming up, for instance, when I was dating one of your friend's daughters, and he was like, you don't really want to date her, honey. She's kind of loose. He said, instead, he said, you should have just kept a rock. Cause I'm like, loose, what does that even mean? He said, so when I was, said, what you should have said is you don't want to mess with her because she a hoe. You know, I'm like, well, well, you know, I don't like just coming out like that. So I'm like, you, you felt like I was hiding stuff. I'm like, you know, I was trying to be nice, and when I talk to you guys, and trying, you know, to to say in such a loving and, you know, so they kind of got me at a crossroads because I'm like, okay, so Marie, so from this day forward, because they're grown now. I mean, and even though you're mom, they know you as mommy. They don't know who the hell you are as Marie. You know, I'm like, because you yeah. kept that. From them, I'm like, and maybe you should have. Maybe you should have. Not that it's too late, you know, because if, if I have to just, you know, want me to just give it to you straight, you're going to be pissed. You're going to be pissed at some truths that's going to come out my mouth because I would have been able to develop a much more calm and passive way to say it. But since y'all feel like I cheated y'all out of the real by being passive about what I'm saying and being too nice about it. I'm like, you know, because I feel like what y'all did now was taking my kindness for weakness. You know, particularly at the moment, I'm I'm really referring to my oldest daughter because I'm like, honey, I've never talked to my mom like that. I've never heard my mother talk to her mother. I've never heard my grandmother talk to her mother like that. I'm like, and for you to get upset with somebody else, and they say when you get upset, they take it all on the closest, but I don't give a damn about that because the next time you be disrespectful, I'm going in your mouth. I said it, and I mean it. So I don't know how much black love that is. I'm hoping by 10 o'clock my, my, my sisters would have helped me change my mind. Otherwise, she got an ass whooping coming because I'm so pissed. It's been this shit happened two weeks ago. I, I am hot. <laughs> so being nice did not work out, you know, and trying to sit down having a civil conversation with a different generation who was, you know, and they were raised off of this, you know, the rap music I was raised off of was raised up was Houdini, you know, when, when when we had issues that we were going against the man. Now they they talking about all kind of crazy stuff, and I don't know if they felt like they part of that rap video or they could talk to their parents or because television shows are now showing kids just getting raw with their parents, but I'm not on that shit, and I'm not about to start. So if I got to stop being nice, which I would hate to do, but if you need me put my foot in your ass, I can definitely do that. 
I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. So I need help. Right now, I can't help the audience. Right now, me and the audience need y'all's help because Marie is ready to scrap with her daughter. I hope she listening because I mean what I say. Yes. I'm gonna need look, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need you to go to www.myomywellness.com girl and I get paid you know, some some Mike people owe me money they and get paid once they get paid once, they get paid once a month yeah, I think I'm gonna be signing in cuz somebody got to talk me out cuz I I'm saying to talk me through it. They got to talk me through it. I hear you. I hear you. So let me let me give you a, a little a little free advice. <laughs> So, Thank you. What is, what is, <laughs> Look, we both need it because I'm ready to punch the Maya in their mouth too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I only had 24 <laughs> hours now. I'm going to rewind it because this has been going on all month. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. need all of y'all to go to my website and schedule. Y'all can schedule a group counseling session. And okay, I need I to do it while you still got that special going on because I got $19. I'm going to you know, I'm need to get that's correct. I'm going to need you <laughs> to go on and schedule. Because I need some type of release. And, and if you can't help me, Kim, I might have to go to the weed, man, because I'm going to keep me calm because I'm ready to go bananas. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so look, here, here, here's, here's what's happened thus far. So as you stated about like, like how we were growing up and we went through a rebellious uh, against the authority type thing, it's the same thing that's happening. Um, our kids are looking at us as the authority. Yeah, she talking in the background. Yeah. Oh. Well, she can. But there, uh, we on live. I'll wait. I'll wait till we go to commercial to tell her to hit the mute button. But go ahead. I'm exactly. sorry. Exactly. <laughs> um, they're rebelling against against the authority. They don't want that. They don't need that. They don't know how to communicate with authority. They know how to communicate with their peers. They know how to communicate with people or energies even that don't show a threat. You show a threat. Authority is a threat. It does not allow them sure. to be on a, on a, 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 an equal plane. So there is an automatic um, submission of mind, of will, if you will. If there's, you know what I'm saying? Like they're going to be passive even in the thought. They're not going to step to it um, even if there is an issue. They're not going to do that because there is, a program that says do not confront authority, do not speak up against authority, because if you do, you're going to suffer the consequences. So there's nothing in their mind that's saying it's okay for me to speak. So what has to happen is the way you approach your children, and and I'll use myself as an example, my kids are, my oldest is almost 30. Gee, (laughs) Yeah, he almost thirty. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just to think about that. Oh, God, um, <laughs> but we went, we we went through some shit. Okay, for a very long period of time, and I had to look at myself what I was going through. You know how I was raised. It was it was different than how I raised my my kids, of course. But I had to look at where I was with them in raising them emotionally, spiritually, economically, everything. That had an effect on how I was able to communicate with them, how I was able to listen to them, how I even heard them speak, okay? Um, It came at me the way I was hearing it based on my circumstances. They were talking at me based on my circumstances, because that's the way I heard it, you know what I'm saying? Even though that may not have been the intent, the intent, that's the way I received it. So once I got to a place where I was mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, or whatever, in a, a healthier spot, I was able to listen on the level that they were actually speaking. I could hear what was actually being said opposed to what I thought I heard. You know what I'm saying? And when it right. got to a point where I became 
I was able to be, quote, unquote, real with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, when my daughter first heard me swear, she said, oh, my God, Mom, oh, my God, it blew her mind. You know what I'm saying? And I had to check myself because, oh, I didn't mean to say that, but, yeah, the hell I did. And that's why I repeated it because I meant that shit. I meant that. You know, but because I did that, because I was real with me, she was able to be real with me because now there's not an authoritative thing. And, and my son, too, is not a, an authoritative position. Is I'm being real with me. Are you comfortable with, with who I am? Because I'm comfortable with me. So if you're comfortable with me being me, we can have, a commu- we can have communication. We can talk. You can say whatever you want to say as long as you're not deliberately being disrespectful to me. Right. Right. Say what you need to say. Express yourself. Be true to yourself. Express it. And you have to allow them that freedom to express themselves without you taking it personally as if they are attacking you or talking at you. They really just want to get off their chest what's there and don't know how to do it because they're being conditioned that it's not allowed or that there's a certain format that has to, has to be done in. They don't know nothing about that. Like telling our kids, we want you to be free, but when before you can be free or, or there's limitations to your freedom, well, that don't go together. You can say what you want, but you better watch what you say. Really? You know, that's what we're saying to them. Say whatever you want. What, tell me what's on your mind, but watch what you say. Uh, right. That don't, right. Like, it yeah, don't go together. Right. There yeah, but, but, that's why, but that's why they don't communicate because the protocol in that fashion is authoritative. They don't relate to that. That's why it becomes an issue. If you want them to be able to communicate with you, they have to feel that they can communicate with you, not the authority, because they, they, they cannot communicate with the authority. That's the issue. If you are sergeant at arms, they're not going to say anything because your position of authority is to control the flow of the communication, is to control the atmosphere, control the movement, control what's being said, how it's being said. So if they have to be controlled in what they're thinking and how they're feeling, which has no control already, they're not going to be able to do it. They're not going to do it. So they're going to shut down verbally and respond outwardly. They're going to respond in their actions. And then when they do eventually say something out their mouth, it's reckless because, you know what I'm saying, it's, they, they got nothing else to do with it. It's just reckless. That's the way it comes out because it's been, it's been there for too long. It's developed and attached and attracted other energies with it. So, yes, there is a process to it, but when, you're, when they want to talk and they're ready to talk, Allow them to express themselves. Give them permission, if you will, to express themselves. Say what you want. Get it off your, get it off your chest. Say what you need to say. The first time I gave my, my son in particular permission to cut, he went ham. You hear me? He went the hell off. But he wasn't talking to me or he wasn't talking at me. He was expressing what he was feeling. That's it. I mean, he MF the whole conversation. Really, dude? You, you can't say nothing else? Everything is an MF? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he was able to get off his chest, get out of his mind what was there, what was clogging him. And because of that and since that, he still say whatever the hell he wants. But there's no disrespect toward me in him saying it. He's just free with it. And it's good. I don't take it personal what he's saying. If he MF somebody in his conversation, I know he ain't calling me one. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's his expression. That's where he's at at that time. Now, if I tell him, all right, chill out with all that, he'll chill out. My bad, my ain't mean no disrespect. And he'll say that, and he'll, he'll back up off of it. But he knows that I'm not judging him on where he's at in his space, nor how he, he's learned to express himself. Just get your funky off. Get it off. And then come on back so you and I can have a loving relationship, a loving <laughs> conversation. <laughs> we can move forward so, with, again, that black love. <laughs> so as far as um, when you're ready to walk away from and just let everybody go, I mean, what you say about that? Because I'm at the point to where I'm just like, you know what, because my kids, they do it all the time. When one, it's like a domino effect. When one gets mad, they'll call the other one, get to talking all, you know, together. Then the other one will call the other one, then all of them be mad at them. 
Like, so what do you say about that? Because I'm at the point now to where I'm like, you know what, I'm just ready to just be like, oh, well, I, you know, be in my little place by myself, and, hey, y'all want to keep holding these grandkids away from me. That's on y'all. You know, hey, I'm ready to walk away. I'm just like, oh, the hell well, like straight up. But what are they mad at? What are they mad at? Well, I just recently found out that, uh, uh, okay, I got twin girls that be 30 this year, and, you know, they got, they're got they mad from some childhood stuff, and they're holding that against me. Like I told them, I was only 13, honey, so I, only, I did the best I could with what, I, what we had and how I was raised. You know, I did what I knew from being taught. Right. You know, yeah, some right. things weren't right. You know, we talked about, we actually had a conversation, me and one of the twins, and um, she was telling me, well, I'm not going to raise my kids like this because you was too structured. You know, I'll let my kids do certain things that you would never let us. And, but they hold stuff against me from when I was a child raising children, you know. Right. And we talked about it. I apologized to them. I acknowledged that some of the stuff was not the right way that to, how to raise them, what I was taught, you know. And a lot of it is. Like, I even told them, like, I thank my grandma for raising me like that because if she wouldn't have, where, where would I have been? You know, where would y'all have been? You know, y'all probably would have been in children's I'm, services if my grandma didn't raise me how she did. You know, you so, and then my, twins. um, huh? I said, well, plus you had, you said you had your twins at 13, right? Yeah. I was a, okay, I was so at 13, you children. can't think like, right, right. I mean, because I, I, I was 17, so I wasn't too much see, older than you. They don't excuse that. They don't excuse that. They just look at it but like, But you know no, what? No, 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 once you apologize, once, like, look, like, I, I, you know, once you apologize and once you ask God for forgiveness, because if you could go back in the past, everybody would be able to do that and, and erase what they didn't want, you know, what, which they could have done different. But that's what I'm doing different with my grandchildren. See, I'm a lot calmer now. You know, I've always been pretty calm, actually. I'm, I'm a happy, perky type of person. But, you know, until pissed, <laughs> until, you, until I'm provoked. It's like poking the bear, like, uh, okay. So, you, know, you know, then then it's a whole different ball game. But I've told them, like, there's nothing I could do about the past. And then the main thing that they hold over me, you weren't there. I will not apologize for not being on ADC. I'm like, that's not enough money for me. It wouldn't have been enough money for y'all. In order to go higher, I had to go to school. When I got a job, you know, well, with the boys you were there, with the boys I was married. I was married until my boys were almost teenagers. I'm like, so, and, and then my daughters are like five years younger than my youngest son. So I'm like, so y'all missed the two houses. I mean, they don't even remember my ex-husband being there. They were young, you know. So I'm like, so I can understand that, you know. We're like, I don't really remember dad being there. I'm like, you know, and I felt, and in a way, you know, it. I do feel bad because when I was married, I was a part-time worker and a stay-at-home mom, and it was okay. But when the boys was ready to start school, I was ready to go ahead and pick back up and, and do things that I wanted to do. But then I got pregnant with my daughters back-to-back. -back. You know, then I had to start back all over again. And then the husband that I had who wasn't supportive, he wanted a stay-at-home wife, you know, and I'm like, well, that's cool. My husband wanted to be the, like, I'm the man. I'm supposed to bring in the bacon. And, and that would have been great if we was living in the 50s. You know, it's a new era. You know, it takes both of us. I mean, you could do it on your own, but why take twice as long? But, see, I also found towards the middle, it, through the, from the middle to the end of my marriage, that he felt like because he did pay all the bills and he did do that, that he has all to say so on the finances. You know, he and, and if he want to go out and creep and shit, oh, well, because he's paying all the bills, what are you going to do? You don't have no, you don't have no skills. You can't leave. What are you going to do? You know, well, some birds just aren't meant to be caged, and I'm one of them birds. Like, you know, I don't have a problem. I didn't, I didn't get married so you could take the place of my father because, for one, you're shitty at it because you can't do it. And for two, you know, you know, I didn't get married for that. I wanted to get married to a partner where we could build together, not watch you build. And you come home bragging to me about how great some of these women that you work with and their work drive and their strive. I'm like, well, they must have very supportive husbands. You know, what I mean? right. that's the only thing I could come up with, because when you have the support, you can get the things done, you know, and when you don't have the support, you could either make the choice. Now, is, is this worth 
an argument tonight that's going to drag out that the, I got to, these kids got to listen to. I mean, the shit got old and I got tired and it was time to go. And I could have stayed where I was at, but I needed to go back home to Ohio to my roots where I could gain my momentum and people that I could trust that I know will watch my children while I handled my business. And that's what I done. You know, and and now here it is, like, zooming up 20 years later. He's like, well, I think that if we would have tried that we – and I'm not saying I'm not – I wasn't without fault, you know, because I got married young. I mean, I, there was fault on both ends. I'm like, but you were very, very selfish. It was all take and no give, you know, and, and it kind of pissed me off when I see with the second wife, you know, I mean – he, he encourages her, well, why don't you go to school? And he was like, well, I know why I messed up with you. You know, so I'm like, well, that's cool. That's cool. You know, but is it? But is it? <laughs> I couldn't even let him get that off. I mean, I'm glad that you changed and you're trying to be a better man, but are you? Are you? you know, so I, I, I. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so yeah, Kim, I'll be I'll be singing you throughout the week. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, very controlling. Yeah. Trisha and I have been friends for a very long time. It even got to the point because we were close. Because we were happy when we were together, talking about everything from marriages to children. You know, I mean, he accused me of, and he accused me of messing with Trisha. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? What's and wrong you, with you? Wow. What's wrong with you? Wow. It was crazy. Wow. You know, it was like he was he was that controlling that he didn't want me to talk to nobody, really talk to nobody. I'm like, you know, I don't know how you and your family grew up, but it's a lot of us. And me and my brothers and sisters are tight. We are tight, tight. And we have been from the very beginning. We're like the fingers of a hand. I'm like, so I don't know what, what you're talking about, you know, but just everything from my sister, one of my sisters who I'm a little closer with than the other one. I mean, because she thinks she's my sister daughter. And, you know, to friends, close friends, it was like he wanted to keep an eye on. I'm like, you're not God. You know, it even got to the point where arguing about going to church, well, you must be sleeping with a pastor. I said, you know, my great-grandmother always told me if a man is constantly accusing you of doing something, that's his guilt crying out of what he's doing, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, and it just makes sense. She's like, well, you only, I'm like, well, I'm going to find out. I'm going to hide in these bushes, Grandma. And I'm going to, she said, but you ain't got to do that because all dirt to go down in the wash come out in the rent. And I'm like, why does everybody talk in parables? At 15, I don't know what the hell that means. Like, what? Is that even me? <laughs> you know, what is she talking about? You know, but it took growing up to understand, like, oh, okay. You don't got, all you got to do is pray about it and let go, and God will reveal. You know, but, you know, when, you, when you're young, Mary, you, you go a little bit beyond that. You go following cars, writing down lights. Like, you know, I'm like, I can't be about that life. Come on, shit, I can't. I can't. And <laughs> 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 uh, they get, wow. you know, you know. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for black love and positivity and having a partner. And, you know, I, I'm pretty easy to get along with. I think because <laughs> I've not had it. So. When we, when I fall or stumble upon it, I will be the first one on here like, God, God, what? Right now, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm always like, I'm always like, <laughs> don't trust you. What are you about? But, you know, it was that baggage that took decades before I was able to let go. It's, you know, now yeah. the baggage is children that act up when they're grown. Like, what is going on? What happened? Why aren't they sweet to me? Like, I wasn't like, the fuck? Who they think they playing with? Oh, my God. You're going to have to get, get – just go ahead and be you. Just be you. Let them see. Wow. Let them see it. Oh, huh. wow. so, I got the vent. Thank you, ladies. I had to. I know we're taking a music break, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and now, it's, now it's time for that beautiful bean footage. So yeah, roll that beautiful bean footage. 
Yeah, yeah play, play a love song. Play a love song. Play a love song. <laughs> you know she got love on her mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Misty, uh, I will address your concerns after we come back. I know we were taking a break, so when we come back, I will definitely address you specifically. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Loud or am I low? What you are low. Very no. low. You're low. I'm low. You're the only one that's low. Why is that? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> you got a headphone in? Yeah, I do. And that's probably what it is. Oh, I got to get the phone. Because mine is on speaker. Mm-hmm. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, now. Yeah. What part is speaker first? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes, we hear. I now I can hear you good. Yeah. Are you? What you oh, so What you do? Turn it up. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either because you're not as loud as you was just a second ago. She don't know what's going on. She in love. <laughs> she see them hearts. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know what's going on. She in love. <laughs> <She's blinded. laughs> okay. So I'm like, I don't know. We can hear the smiling when she said, "I don't know what I did." We can hear you smile. <laughs> okay. Going to play, I got love on my mind. That you know, okay. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying that it seems like I'm doing a lot of smiling. I'm trying to understand, was I not smiling before? Like, why does everybody keep saying that? Like, was I you smiled before, it's, it's but you carry more of a serious look. But I like this on you. It's just before. You. It, it's really it's before. Good. It's positive because you're keeping a smile on our faces as well. We happy for you, for y'all. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. So that it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Indeed. You give it, look. You giving us hope for the future. <laughs> Maybe it is somebody out there for your girl. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Believe it or not, a lot of people like I learned from from even before Kenny. A lot of times we pass by people that we think are just friends, when yeah. really they be exactly what we need. Like I passed Kenny up thinking, nah, nah, he ain't my type. He's just a friend, and in the being, he was like the best thing I've had so far in a long time. Like right. <laughs> You want to say again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so, you know, that's basically how that is. So we're going to play um, another song, and then we're going to come back on air. Okay. All right. So y'all, so, so All y'all right. able to hear me better now when, I, when I'm like this? Y'all can hear me better? Yep, yep. Huh? Yeah, affirmative. <laughs> affirmative, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> affirmative. <laughs> but you know what, though, Marie, when I was listening to you talk about, um, you know, what you went through as far as, you know, your first marriage or whatever, you remember we were both going through a marriage, a, a crazy marriage at the same time. We were both like. Yeah, her husband almost beat me up. Her husband almost mm-hmm. beat me up. <laughs> He busted the door down. He almost got me. He almost got me. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm a hella sprinter. Like, uh, you don't catch me, buddy. <laughs> no, we were we were going through. We were we had to be each other uh, cheerleader at the time because we were both going through it at the exact same time. Literally, like, yeah, that was a crazy time in my life. It's crazy. <laughs> so, um, you can get us on this to your website. I can't hear you. Yeah, now you're going back out. 
Oh, you can't hear me again? Mm-hmm. I can hear you now. I don't know why it's going in and out, but... So you said you've been getting some good hits to your website, to your new website. Yeah, I, I have. Um, MyOMyWellness.com, M-Y-O-M-Y Wellness.com. Um, so that's where you can sign up for your virtual counseling. I'm still doing massage for those who are not scary about being touched, which it, it's um, kind of ironic how actually massage actually helps to promote the immune system. So it, it, it helps to strengthen one's immune system. So it, there's really no need to avoid it. You know, we, we have precautions that we can take for those who are a little leery, but it, ha- it helps to promote and strengthen the immune system along with other things. But, yeah, for those who are interested in um, the counseling or any other services, definitely go to myo, my, M-Y-O, M-Y, wellness.com. Oh, that's the stuff. I'm about that's to the get off. Yeah, I'm about to get off of this live, though, because it's acting up. So if somebody else can go live, that would be great. Um. I'm not going to lie. Fortunately, I'm not computer literate enough to know how. I'm looking at the oh, – I'm like God. looking for the new pictures. Like, where are the new pictures at? I don't see no pictures up. But maybe you I'm on the wrong them. site. I'm on Spreaker. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not uh, – Is that the wrong? No, it's not. It's They're on Facebook. The new pictures are on Facebook. Ah, that would be why. See what I mean? <laughs> See what I mean? I'm gonna have to learn this computer thing. I, uh, I've been I've been against it for about uh, twenty too. years, but I see it's yeah. obviously not going nowhere now. I feel like when my Flintstone, I'm so far behind. Right, so, me too. You ain't by yourself, me too. <laughs> When you got the grandkids showing you, I think my grandson, my oldest one, he was two when he was showing me. I was looking at him like, oh, he's a genius. <laughs> they was like, Mom, he's really smart. He's showing me how to get the stuff. I'm looking at him like, boy, oh, my God, this baby's a genius. <laughs> We're going to come back after this. We're going to come back after this song. Okay. Okay. Patricia is, okay. is um what's the podcast web um info? Huh? What's the what's the podcast web information? The podcast information is a speaker dot com slash Patricia M Goins or on the move. It's uh, com backslash on the move, but it's not live in our recording. I didn't know how this audio is going to. So loud. My desktop. So I'm talking about. You break it all up. Huh? You breaking up? <laughs> oh, y'all can't hear me? Nope. They're going, going in and, in and out. out. Mm. Mm-hmm. So people cannot actually come come on and listen right now, Ben Hunt. Right? Not 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 this show. We coming back on okay. here. We coming back on now, y'all. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. You have tuned into another op- episode of On the Move, unscripted, on purpose with my girls. I got Kim McCann on the line. I got Misty Jones on the line. I got R. Marie on the line. I'm on the line. And DJ coming. You know, she got them grandbabies. It's grandbaby week. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> for everybody. 
Yeah. Well, that's yeah. So uh, back to the relationship thing. So we we um we've heard from Marie about you know how rough relationships can be or whatever. So Kim, what was your advice to Kim? Okay. So what I was what I was hearing was. Um, that all three of the children are basically ganging up at one time at you, or one will pro- provoke the other to get mad, and the other will provoke another to get. No, that's angry. not Marie's kid. That's not Marie's kid. No, we're talking about I just got one. Yeah, that's no, we're talking about Missy, right? <laughs> yeah, this is for Missy. Yeah. Um, and basically, with you being um, a young mother with these children, they don't understand. They don't understand that period. They're looking at um, what they think they lost, what they think they are missing. So you should have the conversation with them individually and then as a collective and ask them, what did you miss out on? What do you feel that I did not do? What did you not get from me that you needed? And can we start now? Because now you have the information. You cannot go back and change that, but you can take the information that is given from that time and utilize it now. So it it is at this point now where you're going to have to basically start over again and grow up with your kid as far as them understanding where you were as a child. Because they didn't have they didn't repeat or have to go through what you went through at thirteen. They have no idea. They have no way of even <clears throat> understanding that at this point. They weren't there. Right. They they don't have that same experience. So the only thing they can do is share your experience um through you explaining it to them but finding out what it was that you missed as a thirteen year old why you're not or why you were not able to give them whatever it is they think they miss as a 13 year old because you can't give what you don't have you can't ask right. for what you don't know exists you know what i'm saying so they have to get to a, first of all you have to get to a point if you have not already of forgiving yourself that's first right. and foremost you have to be yeah. okay with okay i was 13 i was a child I, I thought as a child i moved as a child i everything i did was because that's where I was. I used the information that I had. I only had 13 years of information, period. Right. Okay? Right. That's being fair. So be fair with yourself. Be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I forgive me. This is all I had. And with what I had, I gave you the best of what I had. If, the, if my best was not good enough or if my best is still not good enough, then perhaps you need to check your own self. Check your own right. values. Check your own, um, your own self-worth or whatever. But you've got to know what it is they think they missed out on. So you, you're going to have to have the conversation one-on-one and then do a collective because basically it sounds like one of them is looking for backup. They just want backup. You know what I'm saying? They, it's like trying to make you feel guilty and feel bad for them not having or whatever they think they don't have. Or they could also be playing, okay, let me, let me just throw that out there. They could also be playing you <laughs> or trying to play you and work on your guilt in order for them to get out of you whatever it is they think they're trying to get out of you. Right. So that's also right. a possibility, but not to go there immediately. That's just, <laughs> go with the first part. Trying to keep this, keep this good, but right. right. You don't <laughs> want her to get jumped by her. Exactly. You don't want to get jumped. Exactly. But there, there is an, there is an anger there because they still cheated out of something. But you have to know what it is they they feel cheated out of and remind them, I was only 13. I gave you what I had. And since that point, I've, I've grown up as well. As I've grown and received more information and processed this information and become more of a healthy individual, become a healthy mother, a healthy woman, now I can give you more because now I have it. 
I have it to give. Right. Now, if they decide that they don't want to receive what you have to give, you step back. You're, you can't force them to take a gift. If you're trying to hand them something and their fists are balled up, you can't make them open it. You can only right. offer and then, it. Right. And then if you have to step back, just step back, give them, give them a moment. Let them see what life is like without mom, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my girlfriend, don't step back. Don't step back in anger. Don't, don't step back in anger. Don't step back with a defensive um, energy because they're going to receive that too. That's going to be different. You don't want that. You got to step back in peace, step back in uh, application of truth called love, step back that way because you want the best for them. You want them to experience true love, the application of truth. You want them to experience fulfillment, get the things that they need, be spiritually and emotionally um, full. And, you know, you want these things for them, but they have to want them for themselves. And they, they have to understand that it's a process in order to get that. They're going to also have to get to a point of forgiving themselves and forgiving you. Right. They got to go through all of that. It's a process. But don't allow their anger to pull you into more anger. Understand where it's coming from. Understand why they're angry. And you can only understand why they're angry is to ask them why they're angry. What is it? it, it is it so weird? To, and, and is it fair for you? And is it fair for you to be angry with me, with what I knew, with the information I had? Is it fair for you to be angry with me? Am I cheating you? Am I really cheating you? Because to cheat somebody, you have to do it with an intent to make sure that they don't get something. Right. Right. And you're not doing that. So they got to look at some things. You know, a lot of times it's, it's posing the question to make people think, period. Provoke the thought. Not in your anger, not in an emotion, not in any of that. Just ask the question and let them think about that. You've done what you can do. So don't, don't, do, the, don't do the brush off. Don't do the fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the step back in anger. Don't, you know, don't give them that energy. Don't, don't give them anything to feed off of negatively. Just give them the information that you have, offer the gift, and step back. The rest is up to them. But find out individually what they think they missed what they think they got cheated out of. How would they have done it? You question them. How would you have done it differently if you were 13 years old? What would you have changed? And, see, and, yes, and listen to the silence. Listen to the silence. I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do to go back to change that. So it's imperative exactly. that they, they just all get it out so that y'all can move forward. It's imperative. It gets to the point too, though, to where once they they all turn around, and get mad at each other. So every it's, it's it's a cycle. It keeps going on year after year after year. I mean, I just don't. But what are they like, angry at each other at? They, they get angry they at get mad at each other. Even if they can, if they're holding a conversation, like say two of them talking, and one of them don't agree with the other one, and. Uh, conversation to get very intense because you're not understanding how I feel. This is how I feel, and you should feel it too. You know, it's like they're not agreeing with each other, so they get mad at each other. And it's, to me, it's real sad because I tried to keep my kids together, you know, as sisters, and, and I, I got one boy, you know, collectively because me and my sisters, and um, well, my brother passed away, but me and my sisters, we were close, but then we fell apart. Mm-hmm. And my grandmothers, um, my mom and my uncle, they're apart. You know, they grew up together but fell apart. And my grandmother and her sisters grew up together but fell apart. So I was trying to break that cycle. Right. Right. You know, and it's like the more and more I try, the worse and worse it gets. So it's to the point to where – Everybody get mad at each other and go their separate ways, and then, you know, a month or two, three go by, and everybody back together like nothing ever happened. I'm like, aren't y'all tired of this? You know, and I feel like I don't know what their what their growth is because personally I see just like spits and, you know, little sparks of it, but 
for myself because I'm evaluating me at this right. time. You know, I see a lot of growth in me, and I still see some things where I need to grow. Is is you know, I, I'm trying. You know, nothing beats a right. failure than a try. And it's like right. I'm not even given the you know opportunity to even present my change because they're looking so far back in the past. I'm like, why y'all keep going backwards? Let's start from where we at right now. Don't nobody want to start from where we're at. You know, I'm I'm about to How old are they? How old are they? Huh? The How twins be thirty. Doing? The twins be thirty, and my uh, second daughter. Well, she's the third one because the twins are her. She's 27, and then um, my son is 23, and then my baby girl will be 22. Okay. But and then so they also think because my younger two, my younger two, they were breastfed, so of course they they're more attached to me. So mm-hmm. the three older ones always be like, you treat them so different, and, and they despise them a little bit for that, too, and me as well. So they throw everything in the bowl and stir it up all together. You know what I'm saying? They throw everything together and stir the pot. So it's like, right. I can't win for losing. Like, what, what the hell am I supposed to do at this point? Here's what's, re- here's what's really happening, okay? There's some envy going on, and anger right. is a defense for hurt. Anger mm-hmm. is a defensive mechanism for hurt. When people don't want to acknowledge the fact that they've been hurt, they get angry. I know from experience, I've done it for 20-some-odd years until I recognize that that's what the hell I was doing. But that's what it is. So there, there's a hurt there. So that's why the conversation has to be had. How are you hurt? What has happened? What has transpired? Because I can guarantee you something also has happened that you don't know about and they can't tell you. Something has happened. They don't well, I know that about they the, are able the, to tell you. I know about the, um, you know, the real hurting pain um, mm-hmm. that stemmed from it, you know, the molestation. I know about that, mm-hmm. you know, and they mm-hmm. blame me for that too. But, mm-hmm. like, I, you know, when, when after they went through that, I explained to them, like, I, first of all, I did take the blame. I was sick for three months. Mm-hmm. I made myself sick because I blamed myself because they were blaming me, you know. Right. Um, and then I woke up out of that, and I realized, like, hold on, it, it, I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? So I, it's not my fault. It's my fault because I didn't pay attention. And, you know, back then, wasn't no computers. We couldn't look nobody up back then, you know. Right. Um, so I understand that hurt because I was hurt in that same manner. You know, I was hurt in that same way. So I understand that, you know, your childhood being taken. I understand that. But they still hold that against me, too, as well, you know. Right. I don't, everybody different because I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody just different. They're still holding on to it. I don't blame my mom for what happened to us. I never have, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but everybody different. They, everybody's thinking process is different. But, you know, I know that they're holding that against me still too, you know. And I hurt for them just because they're, they're, they're blaming me. You know, I, say get over it because I'm still not over what happened to me. You know, it still comes right. and, and sit on my mind, too, especially during the winter, you know, so I know exactly how they feel, you know, violated. You're going to feel that for the rest of your life because I'm 41 or 45, and I'm, I still feel it, you know, and I was a little Have they little ever little. seen you cry? Have they seen you vulnerable? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all, all the time. Did you okay. ever have they seen have you vulnerable with with your about your past? Have they seen you vulnerable about that? Yep. How I went they into depth. I told my kids everything that I remember, and we were sitting together and we cried together. Okay. You know, um, I just don't think that my my pain. You, everybody takes stuff differently. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think I'm more stronger. Um, probably because I had no choice, you know. Um, grew up super quick, you know. By the time I was 13, I had the twins, you know. Right. Um, so I had to be strong for my kids. By the time I was 21, I had all five. So right. I didn't have no time to, you know, sometimes people, they have time for each one of their children. I never had that time for each one of my children individually. They all right. was together, 
you know, I had to put everything right. I had into everybody at once, you know, so maybe that's what it is as well. You know, they want some a long mm-hmm. time. Absolutely. It is. They, you know, they, they want some individual that, time. They all needed to feel special and protected, and they didn't get that. That's why they gang up on you. They needed that individual mommy, that, that mommy time. They needed to feel protected by you. They needed to feel special, just them and you individually. They didn't get that. So, yes, they're hurt, so they're expressing it through anger. There's a jealousy amongst all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, none right. of them got it, but they're all jealous of each other. Right. There's a, yeah. there's a hostility amongst all of them because none of them got what they, what they wanted. Right. But, of course, it's being expressed unhealthily, but that's what's happening. So in, that's why I'm saying individually you need to have conversation with them and find out what it is that they think they were cheated out of. Have that conversation. They need that, that one-on-one bond, that one-on-one communication time with just you. And then you can do it as a collective. But that's, that's an absolute got-to-have um moment they need individual, individually, I should say. They got to have that and give them permission to express themselves as they need to express. And they're going to say some shit. And it, it may be targeted, okay? So receive that ahead of time. But they need it. Eventually, they'll apologize because they're not trying to hurt you, but they need to express that they are hurt without you being defensive, because if you get defensive, they're going to stay angry. The purpose is to, to get rid of the anger, Let, allow all of you all to be vulnerable so the vulnerability can be healed, so the family can be whole. But you've got to go through the process, and it's going to take a minute, but be willing to do it. It can definitely be corrected, but know that it's going to take some time. It's going to take some energy. It's going to take a whole lot of patience. And it's going to take something bigger than you. You know what I'm saying? Just right. bigger than all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take that, but it can be done. And then also, um, I had a client or two clients a, a while ago, a mother and daughter, who were going at it, and both of them shared um, – a mutual artistic ability, okay? They were um, poets. One was a writer, one was a poet or whatever. So what I had them do, I I made them perform together on stage and everything, back to back. And I would pose questions to each of them and have them speak it however they spoke it in in poetic form or however it came out what was going on, whatever my question was, they answered it the way they felt like answering it, but it became a conversation between the two. So they were able to listen. They were back to back, but they were able to listen without interrupting, and they could go into their feelings, you know, into their emotions and respond from that, but because they were doing that, they were being real with themselves, they were able to hear completely. They were able to respond from their emotions, but it was real, but they were also able to start their healing process because now they were able to connect with each other's vulnerabilities and see where they were both in error to see where they were both, what they were both bringing to the relationship or what they were both withholding from the relationship. It's called being accountable. That's how I do my counseling. Everybody gets held accountable. Everybody. Right. That's the only way to heal. Everybody you know what, held accountable uh, for their part. Every time what, your, your children fall out with you, you can't always just you know, I'm sorry, I wasn't there. Because they, they've heard you. they right. heard you. And so, mm-hmm. so, like, children use that. That's their ace in the hole when they're ready to get upset about something or if they don't get with their way or you're not you're not vibing. When, when you weren't there, when you, you know, I mean, because I went through that. I went through that, mm-hmm. but then I had to take a real long look at myself. Like, I mean, these kids can't be that wrong if it's continuously saying over and over. And then once I, I dealt with that, 
you know, with just taking a long look in the mirror, having a strong conversation with myself, forgiving myself, praying about the situation, asking God to forgive me, apologizing to my children. But after that, that that's it. Because for like a few years, I was like, well, I'm sorry. You know, I got to work. I'm sorry. Well, you know, and I had to ask them, I was like, well, Marie, you're not sorry. The hell's wrong? No, you're not sorry. Because if you've done nothing and you just came up the a part of your environment, you never would have gotten to where you're at. Now, right. since then, I feel like I've been, you know, stuck, enslaved to the man working extra hard from the, uh, dawn to dusk. I'm like, but, you know, with your children, you did the very best that you could possibly do for the knowledge that you had. Because right. growing up, a lot of adult conversations, I mean, as a child, I was not invited to it. And if I ever heard it, I was, you know, you stay in a child's place about it. I mean, right. because the older generations just did not talk to their kids like like we tried to do with ours. You right. know, but I mean, you can't keep apologizing because if you keep apologizing, then you have to keep reliving it and keep reliving it and keep. I mean, and even if you have to get a professional counselor or get a professional, you know, a pastor or somebody, where after you've spoken to them each individually and then collectively, if that doesn't work, then I mean, be willing to make that next move. But after a while, I mean, you cannot spend the rest of your life in remorse because your child won't let go because at, at, at some right. point it's their problem. At, their, at some right. point it becomes your problem because we've discussed it. We've discussed it, and if you yep. didn't get everything out, when you do talk to them individually, you like, tell me everything. Tell me everything, the gut, everything. I'm not going to say a word, but just know when you're done, I do have my rebuttal. You know, rather rather the rebuttal is apology, rather it's an explanation. That way, everything lay everything out on the table because when we're done with this, I can't revisit it. I cannot be held. Absolutely. I cannot be stuck in this past. Otherwise, I'll right. never see what's behind door number two, and neither will you. Right. At some point, you gotta yeah. let go. You got to let it go. I mean, because when you keep that bitterness, it's like a seed; it'll grow. And the next thing right. you know, you've been bitter from one day, like, prime example, me and my ex-husband, for 20 years, it was a bitter. And we finally had a sit-down last year, and I was able to get everything off the table that I didn't cuss him out in the mirror that he'd never heard, that he finally got to hear. But because I'm older and more mature, I didn't have to scream and yell. But it was very, it was emotional felt. And then it was a true apology. You know, but, you know, it took 20 years. And had I just went ahead, now, when the divorce was ending, the fire was too high because all I would have done was added fuel to the fire. But now we're two different people in totally different places. You know, it's been a long time. You're, you know, you said what happened was when, you're, when they were children. These children of yours, although they'll always be your children, they are now adult children. And you don't want their past to hinder them from their future, but you also don't want their constantly pointing the finger at you hinder you from your future. You still got a life to live, too. Right. Correct. And if the older ones are a little bit jealous of the younger ones, because when you first had children, you were 13. By the time you Mm -hmm. had your last one, you were 21. So by the time now the last couple – got to be 10 or, you know, 10, 11 when I hit middle school, when, when image counts to them, your older children were grown or they was on their way up out the door. So right. and then by then, you have evolved into a different person. So right. you were able to give more and you were able to do more. And just like just don't make the same, you know, that, hey, if, if then I, I can be assured if this had hurt you that bad, then I can be assured that my grandchildren won't go through the same thing because you've learned from right. this mistake. But you mm-hmm. can't keep reliving that. Because it's, like, right. it's like you keep convicting yourself every time they get into it and then they team up on you convicting yourself. You know, like I know that my mother wanted to talk to me because we're close, but I needed to give her a break because our next episode would have turned very physical. And I've never physically, like, beat all my children, other than when I disciplined them younger growing up. I'm like, but I've never done that. One thing I did do every week, you know, we had family meetings every single week. 
I want to know what's going on. So as adults, when some things came out, I'm like, we had meetings every week. Why didn't you say something? I thought you and I were close. Why didn't you tell me this? You know, why, why, I mean, what, what was it about me? I, you, uh, you're supposed to fear your parents, but you should never be afraid of your parents. You know, and then when they get upset, I mean, what they're seeing, a child covets what they see. So when your children don't speak to you for a few months and then you've seen your mom and your uncle do it, I mean, this is uh, this has just been a cycle. Like, I want to break this cycle. We need to be a family. Mm-hmm. We need to be close. People are dying. You know, we need to be closer than what we are. But I can't do it on my own. I've given 110%. Marie, can you take yeah. like a deep breath? I'll take one right now. I'll take one right Because I'm talking to her, but I'm also talking to me. Like, I'm not apologizing. I said I was going to fight this so I was going to be more observant. You know, I, I thought, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Pray for the Christian. <laughs> but she, she is correct, though. You know, just you, you do apologize, but don't make it a habit. It, it doesn't have to go there. You, you know, I've been you hear what but then said. But, see, but you're crazy. apologizing for something, but you don't. You're not knowing exactly what it is you're apologizing for, exactly. because honestly, exactly. you may not even need to apologize. You just need to know what it is and address it. So it's not necessarily about saying I'm sorry, because you don't have to be sorry for something that you didn't know or that you didn't have. You don't have to be sorry for it. You would be sorry for something that you made a, a conscious decision to do something, you know, ill against them. And it backfire, or you, you know what I'm saying, you realize something else. You can, you know, you can apologize for something like that, but you didn't know. You didn't do anything with an ill intent. There's really no reason for you to be sorry for what you did, you know what I'm saying, if there was no ill intent and there was no, you know, physical or that deliberate abuse in any way. There's no reason for you to be sorry. Right. Acknowledge the facts only. Only acknowledge the facts. Period. So when they keep saying, yeah, you weren't there, blah, 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 your response is, you know what? You're right. I wasn't. Next, those are facts. To keep saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, that puts you in a, in, in a state of, of guilt. Guilt is going to lower your vibrations, first of all, but it's going to keep you in, in that mental place. It's going to keep you in the past. It's going to keep you, you know, feeling low about yourself, period. And it's going to keep it's going to keep and or put you in a position to be used. Okay, because that's right. going to be that's going to always be the weapon. There's no reason for right. that. There's no reason and for it. it. Is. So again, that is the don't weapon. That you is don't have to weapon. apologize. Just know what it just find out what it is that they are hurt from. Get the information and deal with it from that point. Now, I did have a sit down with um, one of them, and uh, this is just what was a year and something ago, and she was telling me a lot of stuff, and I'm looking at her like, are you serious? Like, but I let her talk, you know, I let her express how she felt all the way. Mm-hmm. After it was over, it still ended up to an argument because I was like looking at her like, are you serious? Like, the baby? Like, you're like... <laughs> So, you know, because it, it, it all just boiled down to something so little to me, which is big to her. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, like, are you serious? You know, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. I'm like, okay, like, and I felt the in that moment I was like, I'm not going to keep apologizing for stuff that I already apologized for because I done forgave myself. I asked the Lord to forgive me, you know, for, for what I uh, accused myself for, for not paying more close attention. You know, because mm-hmm. I was raising y'all working and stuff too. You know, um, but the 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 gist of it, I don't accuse myself no more. You know, because I don't got over that. You know, I don't got past right. that, not over it. I got past that. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I'm ready to. Just, it's just me. I I just need to collect my thoughts and take care of, and get me together now. 
all of y'all are wrong. Exactly. Can I just do me for a second? Like, come on. Like, they're so used to me because I sheltered my kids, you know, especially after mm-hmm. I found that out. I sheltered them. I really did, and I think that I did it to the point to so much to where they're they got used to that, and they're not wanting they're they're not used to me being far away from them and stuff, you know. And I I think that's part of it too. Now, did you like, shelter them out of protection, or did you shelter them out of guilt? Protection, because I was scared okay. after that. I was scared. Okay. I wouldn't let them go. Stay at no friend's house. Nothing. I my, I, my, I ain't let them do go out my sight. I sheltered them because I was scared it was out of fear. And have you ever told them that? Them. Have you um, told them that? They, yeah, when, when they were asked to go to their friend's house, I'd be like, nope, because they got brothers and they got dads, they got uncles. No, y'all ain't going over their house because I don't want them to do nothing to y'all, you know. Because they, I, I'm just very straightforward. You know, I don't, what they say, pussyfoot around, I don't do that. I've right. always been okay, very so straightforward. Here's, so he, so here's what they didn't hear. Here's what they didn't hear. I don't want to put you in harm's way. I care. I don't. I don't want you to be in a position where you're vulnerable. I care for you. You know what I'm saying? Like they're 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 not hearing certain words. Why you don't want them to go okay. is because you just don't want them to go. They're not hearing. You don't want them to go because you want to be able to protect them. Okay. They just, they're I, not I hearing understand. that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they're angry. They're angry. They're hurt or whatever because they did not get that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I, part yeah. of it. I understand. No, you can't go cause, because because of what's over there. Oh, it ain't got nothing to do with how you feel about me. It don't have nothing to do with the fact that you don't want that that you care for my security. Is you know what I'm saying? Is it's the wording. So they didn't hear that. That's right. That's part of it. That's definitely part of it. But you can fix that and say it's all about the word. My, just call me, honey. We can have this counseling session. I am. I'm I'm you. I, I am. I've got, I've, got, I've got $19, yeah. Okay. <laughs> For that 30 minutes. And I'm going to make sure I email you, too, to get okay. my little $19 special because you got to email before you go on the site. <laughs> exactly. But seriously, yeah, yeah. Got, got on a serious email. note, though, Yes, indeed. <laughs> right. yes, indeed. <laughs> on a serious note, though, uh, like as far as this, like, because I'm just to the point to where I don't mean to sound selfish, but we have to be, I got to be selfish with me because I've never had no me time. I've never had nothing for myself, nothing. So I still feel deep down inside that I need to work on me because I don't want to go to them in this angry state because it ain't going to do nothing but backfire. I ain't right. going to do nothing to backfire because I know me because I can get very upset, you know. Right. Um, I was having a conversation with my daughter the other day. To, I had two of her kids, and I got to the point to where she frustrated me so much. I just hung up. First, I, you know, I started cussing and all that stuff, cussing her out, and she was cussing me out, da, 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 but I hung up on her because I was just mm. so done. I'm like, I'm just done. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm to the point to where I need to help myself first. Right. You know, one of the other kids is getting counseling, and so I told my son just yesterday, when he come picked up the other kids, I said, son, your mother needs counseling. I said, for real. Okay. He looked at me, he shook his head, yes, ma'am. He already know what it okay. is. Me and my son, we talk, we go to deep details, me and my son. I, he's like right. the best friend I've never had, a male friend. You know, you know, y'all know what I'm saying, a best friend, a brother, right. he's my only boy. You know, so we go into right. detail when we talk, you know. Right. And he was like, he just looked at me like, yes, Can y'all ma'am. hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. we're at 945. So watch, pay attention to your, your, um, your clock. We got three minutes. Yeah. Coming back at 945. When we come back, okay. we start wrapping I don't want this phone, this conference call to cut off while we're talking. So when we come back, we're going to um, just kind of like say something real brief and then start talking. To I'll start going around to see who's got what's going on on this coming week. So we can have, we're can we going to have a hard stop at 10 because this thing has been cutting off um, in the midst of the show, and I don't want to do that. Mm. Okay. Okay. May yep, so you know, I acknowledge that I need to help myself 
before I can even go any further because all right, I know how I you know, how I am and how I can get in defensive and all that. I need to learn some defensive mechanisms, I think they call them. Indeed. Yep. Yep. We will no, we'll definitely work on that. We'll work on that. I, I, I'll give you some exercises and, and keywords, you know, to um, keep in your vocabulary. <laughs> oh, God. And they, and, they ain't, and they ain't four letter words, neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm going to have to pull off a dictionary. <laughs> She's about to school me. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, because I'm willing to learn. you got to be a willing participant, you know, so. Absolutely. And the first thing is to do is to admit, you know, so I'm admitting. I know I need help, honey, because I was 13 with them twins. By the time I was 21, I had all five of them. So, you know, I, I know, I know I need help. I ain't ashamed to admit, <laughs> for yeah, real. Like okay. seriously, I know I need help. I need a lot. You okay? <laughs> I got like you. seriously, I'm for real. A 13 year old with twins, and then 15 with uh, three kids, and then come on now, I need yeah, I need a peace of mind and all that. That's why I be trying to be to myself, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I definitely you. deserve it. Yes, ma'am. You know? Yes, ma'am. All right. I guess we're getting ready to, to, to pause then. It's about that time. Let me see. I'm getting... It, the song is 49 more seconds. Hmm? 49 more seconds. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Down to the second. Okay. Well, while they waiting, go to myomywellness.com. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We ain't never, look, we ain't never been this quiet. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to take a deep breath. Another episode of On the Move Unscripted with Patricia Angles and her co host, Kimberly McKent, R. Marie, Lucy Jones, and DJ. I'm serious because I had her up there tied up somewhere. She's <laughs> still being able to break free. <laughs> no, I don't know. But anyway, it's been a deep, deep topic. Like, we've been really, like, it sounds like this was a um, this was a show of a lot of getting getting stuff out out. Uh, um, oh, because um, Marie and Misty, y'all been holding it down. I, I, I ain't even been. I've been feeling like uh, you know I want to say something, but I didn't want to cut nobody off because y'all were really having a moment. So I'm glad that Kim has been taking notes. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can call her. And, what's your website, Kim? What's your website? Kim? It is myomywellness.com. It's M-Y-O-M-Y wellness.com. So basically, you have been telling Missy and and, and, and our Marie to, give you a, to contact you through the website to schedule some counseling because Maria, I don't know, I, I, I want to reach the phone and hug you, Maria, and you too, Missy, like y'all really, and I, and I feel y'all pain because I got to get started, you know what I'm saying? Going through it sometime, and I'm looking at her like, "Damn, you acting like I used to act, man. Chill it out, man." And so I'm thinking about okay. how my friends probably used to look at me, you know. So yeah, yeah. How my mom was looking at me, or how her mother was probably looking at her, or family was looking at her, like, yeah, generational. So I feel your pain because it takes everything mm-hmm. in me some days. Then. I say the wrong thing, and then everybody be looking at me like I done hurt her feelings, and I feel bad because I'm like, I should have said it that way. You know what I'm saying? I meant what I said, but not I ain't mean it that way. And it's just like, whew. I, I, you know, I, I applaud y'all with more than one daughter. Y'all freaking the bomb. I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> I got four of them, and I just be like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. So, to find out what's what's everybody got on their agenda this week. Uh, let's let's start with you, Ken. What, what what's up for this week? What's the plan? What's that going on? Well, of course, I'm pushing my brand. I'm pushing the company. I'm pushing this virtual 
counseling, and I'm still out giving hugs. I know people are like, what the hell? Yes, I am a hugger and a healer, and I know people need that, so I will be uh, somewhere this week uh, outside, of course, giving hugs to but people yes, they, that they have to let y'all out, right, y'all? Uh, Atlanta, oh, we've been out. Right, we've been out. We was out. We we came out fully Monday. That's what I wanted to know. How has Atlanta been, Kim, since y'all since y'all went back? Is it um, is it it's back? The, it's the traffic right now. This is the traffic, but I mean, it's you know, we won't know the full extent of it probably for another week or so. But you know, it's, it's Atlanta, so it's gonna be Atlanta. But um. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for so this the, week, I'll be, I'll just be doing um, my my counseling, and I, I still got some some clients, some new clients that I picked up from the website, of course, and referrals. So I'll, I'll be doing that and and manifesting. So next week when we come back, you'll hear something else that that I got put into effect because the the power has been activated. <laughs> so I'll be manifesting so what's this the week. It's myomywellness.com. It's M-Y-O-M-Y wellness.com. And to get that $19 virtual counseling special, send me an email at heal at myomywellness.com. That's what's up. So what about you, Missy? What you got going on this coming week? Well, this coming week when I'm – no, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just actually about to um, continue working on me until I get my own apartment. I just got off the phone with the, the lady for the apartments early, about three hours ago or so, and she told me that they pushed it back a couple more months. So um, I'm just going to work on me and get me together, you know, so I can have a peace of mind going into this next season and we're Amen. on the path that I need to be on. So I'm not going to be doing anything but working on me. Well, that, well, well, doing that is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Spending that one, mm-hmm. on, that one, that one-on-one time with God, meditating. Go. I would always say, you know, go out if you've got a backyard with trees or something. Go out, you know, and be one with nature for a moment and just listen to the birds and just, you know, have that that communion time, that one-on-one time. That you know, that that that's never for no people. So what about you, Roberta? What what you got? I mean, R. Maria. <laughs> what about you, R. Maria? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just working. I just, I just, I just got. It's just Trisha. It's just Trisha. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a you see how, Let me just say this real quick. You see how Mr. South is? I'm like Mr. South, Kenny, K. You know, babe. You know, he's just like pick one and stick to it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I'm looking forward to my weekend off. So I don't really have much going on next. Right now, I'm uh, in the process of getting ready to move. Scary, because well, I'm not having to watch. I know. No one ever thought I would. I didn't want to. But it, it's time for a change. So I'm just uh, looking forward. It's scary, because I've been in the same spot for like 22, 23 years. So it's a little scary for right. me. But, you know, all I can do is uh, – Take faith. Just have faith. Everything is going to work out. The block is not going to be the same without you, Maria. Like, really, like, seriously. You like, been know living it. On that street since we were high school. Like, I even remember because your grandmother was always there, so it's going to seem so weird to drive down your street and know that you're not there. <laughs> oh, <I know>. Wow. <laughs> Well, congratulations to both of you and Missy for, you know, being prepared to move, you know, because that's another uh, level of another season and until it, and it's hard sometimes, but, you know, I know God got y'all, so congratulations on both, to both of y'all. As far as Thank myself, you. I actually had something really amazing happen. Like, you know, I used to do Uber in Atlanta, so mm-hmm. I, I, I used to sell some of my books while I was in the Uber, doing my Uber ride. And I must have written down my phone number or my email or something. Anyway, someone from Atlanta, one of my old, uh, 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 a person that I, um, had bought a book for me on their Uber ride, got in touch with me 
just to tell me how much they love my book and they wanted to make sure I gave them my website because they wanted to, they was like, are you still writing? Like, I want to get another book, you know. And it was so crazy because I do not know who this person is. If you, if I've okay. seen it in a lot of people, I'd be like, I don't know y'all. I don't know which one of y'all <laughs> it was. No, so that was exciting to me. So um, I'm definitely trying to push my books more. So I ask people to go to patriciagoingsbooks.com. That's Patricia, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A, Goings, G-O-I-N-S, books, B-O-O-K-S.com, and um, get my series. Everybody who's read my books so they couldn't put them down. So, And for someone to call me from ATL that I don't even know that I gave a Uber ride and say they loved it and wanted more, like, that was amazing. That was, a, that was something That's I forgot to say. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Indeed. Yeah, because More it's like always good to get a review, but when you right. randomly drop somebody off and you just happen to say, hey, you read? You want a book? And you give them a book. Right. <laughs> Months later, and say, "Oh my God, I read it. I love it. Are you still writing? Where can I get more? Like that's a big thing for me. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. a blessing. Yep, the confirmation. Yeah, absolutely right. You said confirmation. that lets you know. Yep, confirmation. That, that lets you know that you also have healing ability. That you are also a healer. Yours comes through your book writing. So that's also a a call on you because obviously um, it's working. It's therapeutic for those who are reading it. It's therapeutic for those who need it and for them to reach back out to you, you know, kudos to you, you know, for, for one, keeping your gift activated, you know what I'm saying, and not being selfish and keeping it to yourself because you, you could have done that. So, yeah, I can write, but I'm not going to let this book out. I'm not going to let this information go. Um, especially when you share your own stories, you know what I'm saying? You're, you express your whole life when you write, and it allows people to connect. And that's what, what we were talking about earlier, about people being able to relate to you is not threatening. It's on the same level. They can communicate with you. You, you have the ability to communicate with people without speaking directly to them face-to-face, just in your writing, because they can relate to it. So that, that makes you a healer. So continue to do that, and, and congratulations with that. You know what? I, and yeah. I see that and appreciate that because I have had a lot of people, even when I was in the radio, uh, on the radio in Atlanta, I actually had people would call in and talk about how much they love the book, you know, this can't be loved. And that was a lot for me because it really did, um, you know, I talked about the abuse I experienced as a child in detail. And some readers was like, oh, wow, they couldn't even believe that I went through that and that I was willing to talk to, talk to people about it. But I have to talk about it because there are still children being abused. There's still somebody in somebody's basement. There's still a child that's not being fed. It, because we hear right. these stories on, on and on and on. That happened to me freaking 45 years ago. But it's still going on. You don't. We're still hearing about it, so it's still relevant. And especially, right. you know, women... Um, getting killed via domestic violence and and all that craziness. Like I had to tell my story, and I and, and, and to, even if it bothers some people, I had to tell it. And then the the way that God had me tell it, there's a lot about faith and and, and forgiveness and so much other stuff that it makes you come away. You got to come away with a nugget. If you read my book and you don't come away with something, you didn't read it. You didn't. You didn't. Okay. Read it. Right. Didn't really read it. Because everybody right. walks away with a piece of something. I don't care what I'm writing about. So, yeah, that right. is a blessing. Mm-hmm. Well, I am mm-hmm. so excited that we had another week to get together and do what we do when we do how we do it. And I love the fact that we're able to be live, uncut, unfiltered, and we don't give a darn about whose films we step on because we do it on purpose. I absolutely love kicking it with my girls and letting them, and we just, we just, we just, talk about whatever is going on in our life, in our heart, in our mind and spirit. And we're hoping that a little bit of that might help somebody else. But really, this is about us. Wouldn't y'all say? This is, this is just girl talk. Mm-hmm. This is girl talk. <laughs> yes. And very right. refreshing and, and just, I mean, I feel better already just knowing that I'm about to get on this phone call with Kim. <laughs> I already feel better. I mean, I feel good. Right. I feel better. Right. I do. It's, it's refreshing. 
just to have somebody right. talk to you and, and get, you know, give opinions, give opinions, and just to listen to you. Right. What's your website mm-hmm. again, uh, uh, Kim? It is my oh my wellness m y o m y wellness dot com and to get that nineteen dollar virtual counseling session, email me at heal h e a l at my oh my wellness dot com. Amen, Missy. Thank you for being the awesome grandmother who's doing what she's doing for her kids, even when they work your nerves. And thank you, Maria, for being out here and taking care of patients on a daily, daily, direct type thing when you got your own family at home and things that you're rolling with. You know what I'm saying? And thank you, Kim, for being willing to use your hands and your mind and your spirit and your thoughts to be a blessing to other people, to, hit, to be a healing force. Like, we need that in our life right now. With everything that's going Absolutely. on, we need that. So we need to be able to talk Absolutely. to our mothers. We need to be able to talk to our daughters. We need to be able to talk to somebody who can who can interpret what we feel and say it in a way that we can understand it so that we can be a blessing to somebody else or help somebody else or say something to someone the right way. So anyway, I appreciate all three of y'all. Make sure y'all tune in every every Thursday, 8 to 10 p.m., on the move, unscripted, on purpose. And make sure y'all come back again on Monday with me and Be Love, a.k.a. Brian Love, a.k.a. Big Lover, <laughs> from 8 to 10 p.m. Oh, on Mondays, and me and my boo bear, Mr. Stout, on Tuesdays. Peace and love to y'all. Until next time. We are Peace. 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 Hey. <laughs> Peace and love to y'all. So I will go. Um, I don't know how to start. Tell me how to start the recording. Tell me how to start the mm-hmm. So anyway, I was thinking you know, next um gonna work on trying to play with um Adobe, uh the you know, the photo thing so I can make it something cute for a little photo or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I will be uploading once I get it fixed for a channel, I'll upload it on all the sites, mm-hmm. iHeartRadio, all the time jazz. But I just didn't do it live this week because I wasn't for it because he just hooked up the yeah, everything to my desktop and make sure that everything is good. So I didn't want to do a lot to that. Okay. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Right. We do what we do. We do what we do. I thought it was good today. I think there's a lot of mothers and daughters who need to hear today. I know it was supposed to be about men and women, and we did do that, but I really feel like it's more for the children, the family, the mother-daughter relationship. Because that's where the biggest pattern, passion to the family unit, that was where the passion was tonight. So I feel like that's mm-hmm. what we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yep. We, we always do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> it always right. happens. That's amazing. Well, I'm hoping yeah. you will be able to hear. So, do I sound low right now? It's broken up. Sound. It's not so much low. It just sounds like you break right. it up. Yeah, I hope I hope it doesn't sound like that. But we'll we'll have we got a whole couple of days to work on it, so we'll figure it out. It's gonna we okay. get closer, get closer, it's it, it, it getting closer. Sooner or later, yeah, okay. Move. I have to drop the unscripted. It's gonna be so smooth. But right now, we need that unscripted. Unscripted, damn it, y'all know what it is. All right, dude. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Indeed. I'm surprised it didn't stop. Oh, my gosh. It dropped yesterday. My last interview, I was, I was like, all right, it's big friend. <laughs> 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 all right, then. Love. All right. All right, loved ones. Love y'all on purpose, with purpose. Well, love y'all with purpose. purpose. Amen. Indeed. Indeed. All right, ladies. All right.